There's a particular mistake that will cause even the best snare drum to sound mediocre, but the tuning strategies we're covering today will solve that for you and get your drum sounding professional, even if it's a cheap one. Today we're tuning up two snare drums in real time to show you how to get a great snare sound no matter your drum. Hey everyone, welcome to the Non-Glamorous Drummer, where we're all about learning the non-glamorous core drumming skills that help you make music better and faster. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. Hey, also while you're here, grab my free e-guide below, five steps to learning any song in under an hour. It's proved super helpful to a lot of folks, so check it out. All right, on with today's video. First, we're tuning the bottom heads of the snares, then we're tuning the top heads, and then we'll talk a little more about snare tension and muffling, but a lot of that we're actually gonna discuss as we go as we can apply it to whatever scenarios or situations we encounter, because we're gonna do a lot of troubleshooting too as we tune up these different drums. And I'll start off by saying the big mistake I'm talking about that will make any snare sound cheap is tuning your bottom heads too low. Now, of course, right now we haven't tuned these up at all, so these are insanely low and flappy, but really these heads need to be tuned pretty tight to get a good snare response. And if you find that your snare wires are kind of buzzing in an unmusical way, and you're just not getting the right tone that you want to out of your drum, a lot of times the bottom head's actually the culprit and not the top head. So we wanna start by getting the bottom head in tune, sounding really good, and there's really just one way we're gonna do that, and so that's why I'm doing this first, so we get that out of the way, and then we'll play around with the batter heads. So here we go. Step one, make sure that the hoops are lined up with the lugs, that there's nothing offsetting in any weird way. Uh, most of the time that's not an issue, and it'll line itself up as you start tuning, but I always like to check for that. And then I'm really just finger tightening going around two at a time, making sure that screws are going in. And actually what I'll do before this step, like if I've just put the head on, I'll actually use this drill bit drum key I have to spin the lugs real quick to get them down to where they're about to start tightening. And so that's a good way to at least speed up your tuning process because you don't want to sit there with the key slowly turning and turning and turning before it's even putting pressure on the hoop. So we're roughly finger tight here. We'll do the same thing with this drum. By the way, so these two different drums, the metal drum right here is a six and a half by 14. The wood drum, this is a maple drum, is a five and a half by 14. This one I think is made of steel, it's just basic steel. And um, the steel drum is the cheaper of the two. I think it's a PDP drum and I bought it used a few years ago for about 150 bucks. This one is part of the Gretsch kit that I just bought. It's a really nice drum. I think you can buy it by itself for like 300 bucks. So this is kind of a cheap drum versus nicer drum comparison, but I mean, not necessarily because there are way more expensive drums out there than this one. And I believe both of these drums are very good drums. We're really just looking at how different size drums and different type drums are gonna react differently and how we're gonna encounter different issues and different things we have to deal with with each because they both have their pros and cons. My point though in doing this is to hopefully show you exactly what you might run into regardless of what drum you have at home. Your drum's gonna be more or less like one of these and so hopefully this is gonna help you. So that was round one of finger tightening. What I'll actually do is use this for round two. I'm not trying to go extremely tight and you don't have to go in a star pattern, you can or you can just go around in a circle but we're kind of just tightening it until it's a little bit stiff. So it's kind of like just a second layer of finger tightening, just to make sure tension-wise everything is in tune with itself. I guess I'm doing about two rounds of this maybe. And that's really enough. And at that point, you've gotten rid of most of the ripples. There's still a little bit of rippleage here, but that's gonna be gone when we start tightening more. So we'll do the same thing with this drum, just Finger tightening, step two. And maybe this will get the drum in tune with itself right off the bat. It might, or we might need to make some slight adjustments, but at least having the tensions the same, that gets us off to a good starting point where we know we're We've got a good foundation here, and so getting the drum in tune with itself is gonna be a lot easier when we start by getting the tensions even. That's good enough. So, I'll now grab these two keys. We'll just go opposite, and uh, this is a 10 lug drum. This is an eight lug, so again, differences. So we'll be counting to five here to make sure we get all of them, and then we'll do uh, count to four over here, and we'll do a round of that and see what it sounds like. 
And I'm doing half turns, by the way. One, two, as close to a half turn as possible. I'm not gonna be perfect, but we can always fix that later. That was three, four, five. Same thing over here, but we're counting to four. One, two, three, four. I just do that to help make sure I don't get distracted and over tighten one and get it out of tune. I wanna make this as easy as possible. Okay, so this is super loose and if your snare sounds bad and you flip it over and you feel that, oh, this is how tight my underside snare side head is, that might be your issue. That might be the only culprit here. And if you tighten it up more, you're gonna be good. We're gonna do two more rounds of these half turns on each of these. And I think that's gonna get us more in the ballpark. So that's a good bit tighter. This is very loose right now. So here's another round of half turns. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, back over to here. One, two, it's getting pretty tight now. Three, four, five, one, two, three, four. At that point, we can, we can nitpick it and try to make sure everything's in tune with itself and that each lug sounds the same. That's gonna be more of a big deal with the batter head. I'm not gonna worry about it now because these might not be in their final spot. We might mess with this a little more, but we're at a great starting point. The bottom heads are tight. We might go a little tighter, we'll see. But let's uh, get the top heads tuned up now. So same story here. I've got the, the heads on and the hoops just loosely resting here. So we're making sure the hoops are lined up and we're doing the first round of finger tightening. I'm kind of just doing it also until my skin hurts, until I'm tired of squeezing these screws with my thumb and finger. It's not exactly the most comfortable thing, so that's good enough. We'll do the same thing here. And you could just do, you could just totally skip over this step if you've got a drill bit key or you've got a tuning key with a knob on the top that allows you to do that same kind of thing. You could just directly skip this so that's close enough. We'll now go around with this. So super low. We can go ahead and check and see if it's in tune with itself. Honestly, it's hard to tell because it's so low. So we'll wait and go a little bit higher with that. Same thing with this drum. It doesn't matter if you go in the star pattern or you go around in a circle. It's really not a big deal at this stage because we're still super loose. Okay. So that's... Pretty much finger tight, and so now pull out the two keys. Same thing we did on the bottom head, half turns. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. Okay, so they're both sort of low, medium right now. So we can start checking to make sure they're in tune with themselves at this point. So what I'll do is I'll put a finger on the middle and then I'll just tap around the edge. It's interesting, these two are a little bit high, so I'm actually gonna bring 
these down a little. Not much though. And then every time I detune anything, I'll then press on the head to reseat it in place. And of course, if you're working with new heads, do that. Every round of tuning you do, press it to stretch it because new heads are gonna have to stretch, they're gonna have to seat. And so that'll help just get them better in tune so that they don't detune when you start playing them. These heads though, I've been using for a little while, so I'm not worried about that. That's pretty close. We'll say that's good enough for now. So this one has some very low ones. These two are pretty low. Yeah, both of these are very low. I've noticed that in the past. These two particular lugs tend to be super low. And that could be because the shell isn't perfectly round. It's always possible you have inconsistencies like that where maybe the distance between these two points is less than the distance between these two points. This drum, I haven't had that issue because this is a higher quality drum. The shells are perfect, the bearing edges are perfect. Maybe not so with this one. So sometimes that'll cause you to run into these funny inconsistencies where it's like, well, I tuned everything even. Why does it not sound even? That could be why. But don't sweat it too much. Just bring up whatever's low till you get them even. Yeah, that's better. Close enough. So this one by default has a lower pitch, which is a great thing about this drum. This drum excels at high tuning, so this one excels at low tunings. You can do all tunings with both of these, but I feel like those are the strengths. So let's continue going up. And actually, let's listen to what we got so far. We'll turn the snares on. So they both sound pretty decent. I feel like I don't really like the ring that this one's creating. I think this one's fine. It's debatable. I feel like the ring this one's creating is musical and okay. It doesn't bother me. This ring's a little too long, a little too prominent. So there's a few ways we can play around with the tuning to either get rid of the ring or at least lessen the ring. And really the first thing that you wanna to do to lessen the ring is actually tune higher. The higher you tune a drum, the more you're gonna shorten the decay. And so get rid of that perceived ring. And you're raising the fundamental note of the ring, the fundamental note of the drum really, so that it becomes less noticeable. That's why when a drum is tuned low, it sounds real, really ringy and just weird sounding with no muffling, but when you go higher, you can get by without the muffling because the ring is higher pitched and it becomes less and less the higher you go. So step one for getting rid of ring is just to tune higher, which we're gonna do here because we wanna continue going up to see what these drums will do. And one other thing, if you do feel like you're getting a lot of excessive snare buzz down here on the underside, a good way to fix that is to continue to tune up the bottom head. I've heard conflicting opinions on this. Some guys will say, hey, tune these lugs down a little bit around the snares, and that'll reduce snare buzz. I honestly haven't really had any luck with that. And generally, if, you're, if you've got a lot of buzz going on, it's because this head is actually too low. And if you tune this head higher, just like when you tune the top head higher, you're getting less ring. Tune the bottom head higher, you get less excessive snare buzz. You get a quick response, and if you want a longer note length as far as snare sound goes, you can just loosen the tension. Loosen your snares, so have this head tight so you don't have the undesirable kind of snare buzz. Loosen your snare wires to however much snare buzz you actually want. But we could tune this up a little bit just to see if maybe that'll help get rid of some of the unwanted snare buzz. It might help, it might not make a huge difference, but sometimes it's the little things that can help a lot. Maybe, but there's still an annoying ring. So we're still gonna wanna bring the whole drum up. So let's continue by bringing both up. Still doing half turns. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. So 
this one got high really quick. And I think that has something to do with the bearing edges probably. This one you're not really having to tune very far to, to get a big increase in pitch. This one you gotta tune a little further, so we'll have to compensate for that. I think they both sound just fine. This one's got less ring, it's a little bit drier. This one's got more ring. This sounds great. I love that kind of musical ring. No need for any kind of muffling. I don't want to kill it. If I'm tuning this high, I probably want that ring. And if I want to get rid of it, then it probably means that I'm wanting a totally dead tight high sound. And so if that's the case, I might even throw a piece of cloth on it or a wallet, especially if I want to go for that concert snare sound. Um, this is actually a great tuning for that, where we've got tight wires, we've got the heads tuned really tight. We could throw a wallet here and get a really quick tight sound. The equivalent would be just throwing a piece of cloth right here and we instantly have maybe even tighter on the snares. Yeah, I mean that's pretty much there. And so this snare is really versatile that way. This one we still got a little bit of ring. And if we want to get rid of that, we've got a couple options. We can continue to tune even higher. We could tune the bottom head up a little more and that'll help raise the ring enough that it's less perceived, less annoying. Or, because usually with this snare, I don't wanna go that high. If I wanna go high, I'll use this snare. This one, I'll just throw this on here. These are my like metal jingle, jingle things. And really what they do, when I hit the drum, they bounce up, and so the drum resonates, rings out, does all the stuff that it does. And then after these bounce up, they drop back down. Choking it out. And so it shortens the sound. It doesn't get rid of any of the overtones. It doesn't destroy the ring. It doesn't necessarily muffle it. It just shortens it. And so that's what I find works really well on this drum. This one, I feel like it's not needed. But now that we've listened to that and we've talked about ways to reduce ring and whatnot, let's tune things down because we encounter a whole other host of issues when we're tuning low. And that's where things also get interesting between these two drums. So now I'm just gonna detune both of these top heads a bunch. And every time I detune things, I'll then press on the head, basically to make sure it's stretching and reseeding. We'll go even further. Basically, we wanna go like all the way down to where we're just doing that low kind of sound and figure out how do we wanna really make the drum excel at that. Do we wanna do any muffling? How do we get rid of that annoying ring that happens when you're tuned low? Basically, if you're going for that low sound, you get all this resonance and annoying snare buzz that usually is not what we want. So we're gonna deal with that. Let's do the same thing with this drum and get it tuned down low also. And this one just naturally goes super low and sounds really cool doing it. This is my go-to drum if I want that really low fat sound. Let's see if we can go any lower on this one. Either way, there's a lot of annoying ring, and usually when we're tuning low like that, we don't want all that ring. It just sounds nasty. So a, a great way to get rid of that without using any muffling is to detune lugs with this drum. This one does really well with this, actually. I've taken this lug totally out.
It's actually an interesting growl that it's doing. And I think it's because of how low these other lugs are. So I'm actually gonna go up a little bit on these other six. That's a little more of what we want there. And so we've got these where they're not incredibly loose, but we've loosened these two a lot. So that gets us into the, the dead ballpark pretty quick without having to use muffling. This snare though is a little bit trickier and maybe it's because it's 10 lugs. It's just a different drum. It's not as thick, it's got different characteristics. And so I find that detuning lugs doesn't seem to work as well with it, but let's see what happens here. There's an interesting really low note there, kind of like what this one was doing. So let's try bringing up these other lugs to see if we can get rid of it that way. That way the overall tuning isn't too low. We're just trying to deaden it by pulling out lugs here on the close side. That's a little better. And actually I'm hearing a lower note from this one. We could go a tad bit lower here to match, but hey, the point here is regardless of what kind of drum you've got, you can get the low beefy sound. You just got to play with it. So right now we've got these three lugs totally loose, three lugs totally loose. The other six are, I'd say a little beyond finger tight. And then with this one, it's kind of the same case. We've got six that are, uh, no, yes, yeah, six, six that are sort of beyond finger tight and then two that are very loose. Um, not completely pulled out, but pretty loose. And so that kind of gets us that dead sound. But I think to perfect the dead sound, just because I have the jingle thing, honestly, I'd rather use it and get rid of any of that last bit of nastiness that we couldn't solve by detuning. And so I'll just throw this on here. And that just shortens it. And I think it just kind of it's like the icing on the cake, honestly. It helps perfect it and really get me that exact low beefy sound I want. Same thing over here. It's not a bad sound the way it is. Like if we want low dead, it's doing that. But this just helps perfect it, I think. It just adds that little bit of cutoff that I always desire with the low tuning. So play around with that and find some sort of solid object you've got lying around. Doesn't have to be just like this. The reason I say solid object over tape is what I was explaining earlier, that this doesn't initially kill all the resonance and tone of the drum it's just shortening it. So it's allowing the drum to still resonate, the head to resonate, and then it's choking it out. And so this is a, a better way to go with muffling. So you could use a pencil, you could use some tuning keys, you could find random objects to tape onto your drum to really accomplish that same thing. So just a couple of final thoughts on snare tension before we wrap up. Generally, I'm tightening my snares according to how I have the drums tuned. When we were tuned high a few minutes ago, I wanted the, the snare wires tuned a lot tighter. Now that we're going low, I want them to be looser because it sounds really weird to be low and tight unless we unless that's the sound we want. But most of the time, low and loose, high and tight. Um, but it also depends on the song and the genre. There's no hard and fast rule. There's not necessarily a snare tension sweet spot either. And as far as dealing with snare buzz, something that we drummers are just always having to deal with, if you hit a tom and you've got a ton of buzz or floor tom, ton of buzz, then you can either play around with your tension a little bit or Play around with the bottom head tuning. Tune it up just a little bit, down just a little bit. Just little subtle changes, whether it's this head or your tom, that can solve it just to get you out of whatever the ratio is that's really causing the, the buzzing to happen. What I would say don't do is put any tape on your wires. If you put tape on your snare wires, you're gonna decrease the buzz, but you're also gonna drastically change your sound. Check out a previous video that I did last fall where I, I tested that out and I put some tape on the wires and it gave us some really cool sounds. If you want a dry funk sound, um, tape on the, on the wires will do that, just a little piece of tape. But use that for musical reasons, musical purposes of changing your sound rather than trying to solve snare buzz. If you've got a lot of buzz or a lot of annoying low ring, again, tune that bottom head up. That's the number one thing, number one takeaway here. Make sure your bottom heads are tight enough. That way you're getting a quick response out of the snare wires um, that sounds really good. And if you are tuning super low up here, you can maybe play around with detuning that bottom head, but I wouldn't detune it much. Otherwise you quickly lose that snare response and you get just a weird thud kind of sound. And try to tune your drum so that it's in tune with itself. So as you're tapping around the edge, everything is in tune. And that way whatever ring you get will be a nice pleasant ring. 
Um, but then if you want to lessen the ring, tune a little higher, you could even tune just a couple lugs a little higher and that'll help bring the ring up so that it'll be less uh, perceived. But by loosening your snares, you can also use the, the length of the snare buzz to help cover up the ring so that there's a less perceived ring. But easiest go-to solution is just something like this. You can slap on there just to shorten the sound and that will work on any drum and make any drum really excel at the dead sound. So I hope this video has helped you out. It's been really fun comparing these two very different snares, but seeing how they each have some strengths and maybe some weaknesses, but for the most part, we can get them to sound very similar to each other. We've got good heads on them, good snare wires on them. And so play around with yours, follow all these steps, do the troubleshooting. And if you're still frustrated, consider getting some of the, the pure sound snare wires. These are really great. I'll throw a link in the description. It's possible that's your, your weakest link. Or maybe you're still using the uh, snare side head that came with your drum. Maybe it's just time to upgrade. Um, just any thin, clear head that's designed to be on the underside of a snare is gonna do just fine. And I like coated Remo ambassadors on the top. Really, it all comes down to experimentation. There's no one way to tune a snare drum. And that's why I use these two here. So you could watch the different approaches I take and different things we encounter on a cheap drum versus a nicer drum, metal versus wood, steel, maple, eight lug, 10 lug, six and a half inch, five and a half inch. There's just all these variables. And so you just have to be patient with it. Keep an open mind and do your best to experiment and just find the sound that works for you. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. And before you go, go check out my free guide, five steps to learning any song in under an hour. This is a powerful method that will help you learn a song by ear, memorize it, without consulting any drum tabs on the internet or song learning tutorials on YouTube. So it'll help speed up your process and you'll be able to take pride in actually learning a song yourself. So do check that out. It'll even show you how to whittle down your learning time to 15 minutes so you can learn a song in 15 minutes. Thanks guys, have a great week.